What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a parametric title block in Revit. So that basically means that you're going to have a title block and then when you load it into your project and set your views, your floor plans, your sections, your 3D views, it's actually going to take that information from the view and load it into the into the title block so you don't have to do it manually that's why it's parametric but before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day and if you want to download this uh, Balkan Architect uh, title block uh, a3 uh, metric uh, you can go to my patreon first link in the description and you can actually get this project file Okay, so let's get started. As you can see over here, I've got already a title block and I'm just going to show you some of the tools that I used uh, to create this title block. So you start off from a template. So you just go over here to File, uh, New, and then you go to Family. Uh, let's cancel out of this. And then here in Families, uh, you just go for Title Blocks. And here for the metric, you've got the metric ones. Now you can either go to one of these or you can go to new size and this is actually going to allow you to create your own uh, sheet size if that's what you prefer. I just used the A3 metric for this one. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. So you basically get this outline. So you just get this and then you need to start uh, basically drawing. It's not modeling, it's 2D, so it's drawing. So you go here to the create tab and you've got uh, these tools. So you can use the line tool. That's what I used to create most of this thing as you can see. So you just go simple lines and use all of the simple tools like fillet, trim and extend, stuff like that. So it's just basic tools to get uh, to this, uh, this drawing. Then to add text, like over here, when we look at these parameters. So for example, the project name. So when you load this title block into the project, it's going to take that project name and automatically place it here on this label. So how do you create a custom label for this? So that's the parametric part. So let's create an additional one over here. So let's just copy this line and let's say I want to have something over here. Okay, to create that label, you go over here to, to, to the Create tab and you have this Label option. Now you click on the Label option and you just click anywhere. Now you can try to click where you want to have it, but you're usually going to have to uh, change the position once it's created. So I just click anywhere and you get this Edit Label dialog. So here you see all of the available labels that you can use for this project. So just search for what you want to use. So maybe you want to, let's say, let's find something, maybe organization name, that's something you want to have. So you just load it over here, organization name, and you hit apply, okay, and here it is. Now you select it and you place it over here. Now as you can see here, it's aligned to the left, so when it changes the, the name, it's actually going to go to the right. So I prefer to have it aligned to the right, so just select that and go over here into the properties panel and go our alignment right and now as you can see it's over here now you can just play around place it there so whenever this changes it's, it's going to appear in this uh, in this section over here now you can always change the size of the label so just go here into edit type and then here we've got a few sizes uh, size options or you can go duplicate and then create a new size here you can choose the the font of the text so you can maybe change it from Arial to something better like Century Gothic that's what they love to use. You can make it uh, bold, you can change the size, you can change the color of the text. So all of those options uh, you can change. So as you can see here, we've got this label. Now, once you place the label, this, this only says organization name right now. But when you load it into the project, it's actually going to pull the organization name from the project. So if the organization name is Balkan Architect, it's going to write down over here Balkan Architect. So that's why I have over here for everything building name and then it says building name. So this is the thing that changes. This is what stays the same. So how do you create that the one, the text that stays the same? Well, you just go over here to create, you go to text and then you just click here and then you type in well, basically the same thing that says over here. So it's just organization name. And then I like to add two dots and there you go. So you just place it over here and 
basically when you load it into the project you're going to know okay organization name and then it's going to say the name of the organization now i'm just going to delete this because i don't really need this parameter this is something that i want to use for a certain project and i organize my title block in this fashion because i like to have just a, a general information the project over here like the project name address building name as well as the, uh, the project name and number and then i like to leave a bit of room for some maybe tables or uh, maybe uh, legends stuff like that then underneath we've got author drawn by checked by and then here i can add a key plan or something like that if i want so i've got a bit of extra room over here and then here we've got the the sheet uh, information so the scale the sheet name and the sheet number and here i've got this just a blank circle here i'm going to insert my logo so i didn't do that so far i want to show you how to do that so you just go over here to the insert tab you find image and then you just search I'm just going to go to desktop and use this thing and just place it like this now it's way too large so uh, you just go like this and you resize it then you place it there then you again resize yeah I guess this looks decent enough now I'm just going to select that uh, outline that little circle and delete it because I don't need it and there we go so I've got my I've got my logo I've got all of the project information and now let's load it into the project and see how it works. So here I've got this project, this is the floor plan and I want to use this template for that floor plan. So let me just go load into project and here now it's loaded. Now let me go down to my sheets and here we've got this sheet and okay let's delete, uh, let's delete this one. Okay so this is the, the one that we want to keep and maybe select this, move it a bit up. Or yeah, maybe we can remove the title block now anyway. So we've got this and here I've only got this blank paper, but it says A3 metrics. So I'm just going to open up the drop menu and use the A3 title block. That's the one that I loaded into the project right now. And as you can see, it automatically changed. Now, if we look at the project number, it says 001. For the project name, it stayed project name. For the building name, it's blank. So we've got some issues over here. Same thing with the author. The only thing that works is the scale, uh, the sheet name, it's unnamed, and the sheet number. So uh, the scale and the sheet number are working fine. It's just taking information from this here uh, floor plan, but we've got additional problems. So first for the sheet name, how do you add the name here? Well, you can't edit this. You have to go over here to sheets, right click on the sheet, rename, and here the sheet number can stay the same but for the name let's just call this floor plan and as you can see it immediately when you change it over here it changes over here as well now how about the rest of this information well for any of your projects you've got your uh, manage tab and on the manage tab you've got project information this you should probably fill out when you start working on a project so we've got our organization name organization description we don't really have these parameters but for the building name let's add some name so let's call it best building ever okay for the author let's add Mr. Balkan because that's how you guys call me and then for the issue date yeah let's leave this blank project status client name owner let's call it YouTube because this is for YouTube and for the project address let's say here oh you have to click here and then type in the project or no let's yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we've got a project address, then we've got project name. For the project name, we can, well, we can add any name. Let's just call it my project. And for the project number, let's say this is our fifth project. So let's type in five. Hit OK. And now if we zoom in over here, the project name is my project. The building name is the best building ever. The project address is here, uh, plus this smiley face. And then if we go down, here we have Mr. Balkan and uh, the rest of it. So that's how you change those parameters that, that, that you get automatically with your title blocks. Now, of course, once you're here, if you want to do anything manually, any additional settings, you can always go here to the, uh, to the annotate tab 
and you can add some text or you can add some detail lines so you can make some further uh, changes if that's something that you r require but yeah anyway that's how you create these parametric title blocks in Revit I hope you have learned something new and I hope you, you use this in the future because it's really useful it saves a lot of time when you don't have to input all of this information manually and uh, basically any other uh, here title block that you create this is just going to be duplicated all of the information from the project Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Get to the project file, first link in the description to my Patreon. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.